I, I want to get a, a bit more of an insight into exactly where Kenya has been standing when it comes to her regional obligations and mm. if there's been any shift or if there's been any change and exactly about the uh, infrastructural uh, developments that have been going on across the region because there have been a few successful intra uh, regional infrastructural initiatives that have come to play. I think Kenya is still the, the leader in the region <coughs> and uh, it's likely to be, I mean it's role as a regional powerhouse is likely to grow uh, on several fronts. First, Kenya is still is the, the main economy uh, in both East and Central Africa. In Comesa, of all things, Kenya's main export is petroleum. We get, get a shock because it's more industrialized, it's more uh, you know, in processing things and so on. So it's, it's, it's going to be a major economy. And there is no indication that it is going to be to have a lesser role uh, in, in that. Uh, not, not necessarily because it has resources. In fact, to be honest, uh, Kenya is now the fourth largest economy in Africa uh, by, by, by recent uh, measurements, and it's, it is the, f the only African economy that is not mineral driven. It's not mineral driven. What is driving the Kenyan economy is, is basically uh, the fact that it is interlocked in a very intricate ways with the neighboring economies. It's also interlocked with the global economy in the sense that many international actors prefer to have their headquarters are here, including right. the United Nations. Therefore, in a sense, they're becoming a kind of a Geneva, a kind of a Switzerland of, of, Afri of Africa. But at the same time, it is increasingly beginning to become a soft power in the sense that the, the difference between, for example, uh, Uhuru Kenyatta and Yoweri Museveni of Uganda uh, in the last couple of years was about simply that, because Museveni preferred the hard power in response to South Sudan, that we take our troops and save our friends and that's it. Right. Kenya preferred the way of mediation and joined with the Ethiopia to do simply that. So the point is that what is driving Kenya's uh, regional policy are three things. One, the assert assertiveness of the Uhuru Kenyatta government and it's uh, uh, particularly it's Pan-African orientation. The second is development orientation, leading the region in terms of that, and that bringing to problem with the Tanzania, which sometimes feels it's being isolated. And finally, it's new resurgent military role in the region, particularly in Somalia and Sudan. In looking at Kenya's policy now moving forward, uh, whether it's regional or international, though, uh, and I want to start off with you, Daisy, because as we went into uh, 2000 and uh, 13, Kenya had begun a policy of looking east right way back to 2003. Give us your view, though, of uh, your thinking of where uh, Kenya will be headed moving forward and that policy starting back from 2003. Well, I think that it has worked for us um, um, in terms of being able to fast track infrastructure development and um, position us better because. Um, the looking east has allowed our government to access uh, resources and partnerships that are actually working for the benefit of Kenya. I think that it also works, um, it's, it's, it's also um, advantageous to have a diversification of your partnerships. But one of the things that we don't seem to be tapping into the looking east is how then do we also inculcate or at least transfer some of those skills to our local citizenry, because that has been the complaint. There seems to be um, um, an overbearing uh, burden, uh, an overbearing where, while we look east, the support from the east also comes with uh, skills that are not readily available here in Kenya. And we don't seem to be seeing that skills transfer necessary to ensure a continuity for the Kenyan population. So I think that moving forward, even as we continue with the partnership with the East, I think there are many skills that we must uh, borrow, we must build as Kenyans. And I think that part of that partnership, aside from the financing, I think a key element of that partnership really must be skills, innovation, um, uh, and transformation of, of, of sectors because we've seen what has happened right. in the East that way. When we talk about youth unemployment, one of the crises among the youth is that despite that unemployment, for what is driving the economy, those sectors where we are actually seeing growth, the absence of skills, you know, is a very critical factor. So it would be good if those partnerships also envision 
inculcating skills among the Kenyan citizenry so that we can move together, so that we begin to see that trickle-down effect and the benefits of the growth that is being driven by the benefits of looking east. Dr. Kagwanja. When it comes to looking east, I think Kenya has greatly uh, balanced between the de 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 declining resources in the west and the I increasing resources in the east. And that's why it is among the first uh, to, to have this kind of a railway, uh, which we've already seen unveiled, the SGR railway. Now, a, a discussion or a, a kind of a comparison between the SGR in Kenya and, the Thio and Burundi, uh, Djibouti, Ethiopia, is simply that Kenya is more realistic and more pragmatic. You don't want to go to an electric train, uh, whereas you go into an electric train and operate only for three hours, and Kenya can operate uh, around, the, around the clock. The problem with looking east in terms of Kenya is that it is economic centered. I wish they could look at the political structures that have enabled the east to ensure stability uh, in the icon to, to sustain the economy right. or to underpin the economy. The, 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 the we are still hanging on this idea that liberalism is the, is the solution to all our problems. And the, and the, ki the kind of anxiety and sometimes uns uncertainties that we find around, around in Kenya every five years of election right. is, is basically about that, that we have not found the vital center on which to hang our development. So we are still waving because we think that liberalism is the, the answer to everything. So we're going to wind up in a moment, but I want to get one final comment from all of you very briefly, though, and I'll start off with you, Daisy, though, going into the election, whether it is uh, about Kenya's regional policies, international policies, or domestic policies, what is it as a Kenyan you would like to see? First of all, I would like to see us emerge um, safely from the um, electoral process and um, that moving forward, we begin to see a more inclusive economic growth, that we see a trickle-down effect, integration of women into not just the political spaces, policy and legislative spaces, but also women engaging actively with the economy. Right. Dr. Mm, I have no doubt that this election is going to be uh, peaceful, or rather Kenya is going to weather this election, that, that I have no doubt. Uh, the question would be whether, uh, in terms of dealing with whatever incidences that might emerge from this election, uh, Kenya is going to still have the kind of uh, popularity or support it has internationally, particularly on the question of human rights, because that's going to what it's going to be raised. Uh, but I, I, am, I, I can say with certainty that if uh, when Kenya go over this election, the next five years, uh, with no doubt, it's going to emerge as a major uh, powerhouse, both economic and political. And, and, and I'm very hopeful about that. Right. Dr. Awiti? My expectation and my hope really is, can we come out of this election and focus on the work of the people, building a strong, stable <coughs> economy that produces goods of prosperity that are equally shared. Can we begin the hard work of fixing the unemployment question? Can we slay the ghost of corruption? Can governments, can the two governments that we've created through this constitutional dispensation begin to work much more coherently? Because I think the, where the rubber meets the road is really at the counties. But what you've seen is this antagonistic relationship between these two governments. It's about revenue sharing, how much government do we keep at the central uh, in, in Nairobi, and how much of government do we devolve out there to the communities. I want to see these post-election conversations as, 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 as a <coughs> basis for, for, for relaunching the country going forward. Right, everybody. Uh, Beatrice, for me, I think first I'm excited that uh, Kenya is amongst uh, uh, countries in Africa that are not just uh, talking about the frequency of elections, but the quality of election. We are now more concerned not just about holding elections every five years, but improving the quality. That for me excites me. But two, I just hope that Kenya will continue setting that example that uh, each election helps us to strengthen our democracy and not to destroy it like what we saw in uh, 2007. And so I think we should, uh, uh, as Kenyans, we all have a responsibility to make these elections work for the good of, uh, of our country. Fair, free, fair, credible, and peaceful elections. And lastly, I think it's the question of the youth. I think every uh, five years we see politicians emerging and making pledges and promises to young people, which they never fulfill. They become material for, for elections. I think post-election we want, I think many young people, and young people, Kenya being a youthful uh, country, want to see most of these promises 
uh, fulfilled in terms of creating opportunities, providing uh, decent uh, uh, jobs, and fixing some of the challenges that affect uh, youth who are actually the drivers of the economy. And we leave it there with the drivers of the economy. Rafael Lobonio, thank you very much for your thoughts. Uh, Dr. Alex Awiti, uh, Dr. Peter Kagwanja, and Daisy Amdani to you all. Thank you for your very insightful discussions here. And we leave it there tonight on uh, Talk Africa. But do follow this conversation on YouTube, uh, Facebook, and Twitter. And join us again next week for more Talk Africa. From me, BFS Marshall. Goodbye.